What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a really long time. I had a crazy summer and uh, I'm starting to slow down now. So I wanted to go ahead and start making videos again. Uh, recently I got hit up by a knife company called Tombro. They wanted me to review the knives so I want to do an unboxing of that in this video now. Um, I went ahead and ordered the knife as well as Tsubaki oil. Uh, what that is is camellia seed oil, mostly used in Japanese kitchens where uh, their knives are made of high, super high carbon, and this helps prevent rust. I'm going to do another video in the future to uh, explain how I maintain my knives, sharpen them, and also store them. Um, as you can see here, that is Tsubaki oil, pure Tsubaki oil. Anyways, let's go ahead and see what's inside the Tombro Viking Knife box. As you can see here, it is made in China. So the expectations were a little bit lowered when I saw that sticker. However, just because it's made in China doesn't mean it's bad. So let's go ahead and open up the box. All right, the front just has the logo on it. Nothing special. Nice box though. And here's the knife. And it did come with this um, leather sheath too, so I thought that was really cool. Let's see what else we got inside the box. Nothing else. Um, no paperwork, no certification of anything. Okay, well, I guess that's it. Nothing special. Well, let's take a look at the knife. It did come with this leather sheath, like I said, and um, looks like it's wrapped in plastic. It's a nice sheath. It's cool that it has a strap in the back so you can attach it to your belt if you're outdoors hunting or um, building campsites or doing anything outdoors. I think that's really cool. Here is the knife itself. It does come with the edge clips, little protective uh, plastic pieces. The weight of the knife is it's actually really heavy. So let's take a closer look. As you can see, it does come pre-oiled. Uh, this is important for knife companies as they send knives out, so during transportation it doesn't rust. Uh, sometimes they could be shipped from overseas and um, lower or higher humidity levels can actually damage the knife, so um, it does come pre-oiled. Before I do any kind of testing, I am going to wipe all of this oil off and um, we're going to see just how sharp it is. But yeah, here's the knife. Um, the balance of it is really close to the pinch grip uh, or the bolster of the knife, which is really nice. Um, very well centered. And honestly, it's not bad for being um, a cheaper knife. But yeah, here is the pinch grip and I feel like I have full control of it. This is the 6.7 inch hand forged meat cutting knife by Tombro. It is a handmade chef's knife that could be used effectively in a kitchen or near a campfire. Fully equipped with a faux leather sheath for portability, as well as a slot for paracord or even a fire starter steel at the butt end of the full tang. Right at the pinch grip, you'll find five anti-slip grooves designed to anchor your finger or your thumb along the four millimeter thick spine of the blade. Sporting a thick rosewood handle with the classic triple rivets through the full tang, giving the knife a solid grip and pleasing aesthetics. The faux leather sheet that comes with the knife is a fantastic addition if you find yourself working near a campfire or being outdoors in general. And it does come with a belt strap which I think is super awesome. Overall the Tombro Viking knife is standing 11 inches tall, 2.5 inches wide, 1 inch thick, and weighs 1 pound. So now I really want to find out how sharp this knife really is. I'm going to be comparing it to my Takeyuki EY 8 inch Gyuto. This knife I sharpened myself on my set of stones. I have a 1000, 3000 and 5000 whetstone set. And I want to see just how sharp the Tombro Viking knife is compared to mine. I'm using a very thin, it's called handy whack paper. Uh, this absorbs oil and mostly found in delis. However, I find it the best to see just how sharp my knives are. And as you can see, and as you can see, my Takeyuki Y knife is really, really sharp. Let's 
it seems sharp but um, as you can see it doesn't really compare to my knife um, again this is factory sharpened I'm sure they use a belt to sharpen it and uh, mine yeah this isn't that great <laughs> Um, but mine was sharpened on stones, which is going to be a lot better end product versus the belt. And it's just not doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and test this knife out on some of the produce that you might find yourself cutting at home if you are thinking about buying this knife. And yeah, as you can see, it's failing the tomato test. It is sharp, but it could be sharper. It does mince and dice pretty well, so I'll give it that. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try on this celery. And yeah, it does seem to do the job quite well. Let's give it a try on this red bell pepper. When you cut a bell pepper with the skin side up, it does give it a bit of a better challenge. If your knife isn't properly sharpened, it will not slice through the skin of the pepper as easily as the flesh side of it. So this knife is actually holding up pretty well to the skin of the pepper. Using this knife, I actually found it to be a little challenging to cut the onion. As I was pushing down with the knife, I felt it was driving to one side, which immediately told me it wasn't sharpened evenly. Upon investigation, I realized the edge wasn't sharpened 50-50, it was more so 70-30. This might not be a problem for most people, but it is something that I look at when I purchase a new knife. And as you can see, after adjusting my technique, cutting the onion wasn't a problem at all. At the $30 price point, this knife is well worth the money, and that's including shipping. Most of my knives are $300 or more and cater more towards Japanese cuisine preparation. The value of this knife competes being a fraction of the cost. So now we all want to know what is Costa's rating. I like to use a 5 point system whenever I'm giving a brand new knife a rating. Number one is the practicality of usage in a kitchen. I gave that a 7 because it's a little too short. It's more of a cleaver than it is a all purpose chef's knife. Number two is going to be marketing and advertising. I gave that a seven because the ad did say that it was more of a boning knife. However, I felt like it should be good enough for both the kitchen and outdoors. I personally feel like this is better to use outdoors or if you're barbecuing or grilling outside. I really wouldn't use it in the kitchen to be honest. Number three is going to be the quality of metal slash the edge. I gave it a 5 because it failed the wax paper test as you saw earlier and I don't know what type of metal it is. All the ad said was that it was a high carbon blade and that can mean many things and there could be a lot of different types of metal mixed into this knife. I don't know because the ad said it which is also contributing to number 2. Also the 7030 sharpen was kind of, a, kind of a surprise. I didn't like that it wasn't 50 50 however it might not be an issue for everybody. Number four is going to be the ergonomics and overall build. I give that a seven because the handle itself is quite large and it does weigh a pound. It is quite heavy if you're planning on wielding this in the kitchen, so keep that in mind. Number five is going to be the price. Now I give that a full 10 because at $30, including the shipping, you are getting a lot for only $30. So I gave this knife a 7 out of 10. It is the best bang for your buck at only $30 including shipping. I think you're getting a fantastic deal. I would recommend buying this knife. I do feel like this knife is meant for the outdoors. So if you like to cook and grill and barbecue, I think this knife is perfect for you. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here, you guys. I really appreciate it if you made it all the way through and enjoyed my review of this knife. This is my very first time doing a product review. 
Um, I do have another video of me cutting a Scottish salmon with this Tombrow Viking knife. If you are interested in seeing that, please leave a comment down below, hit the like button, or even subscribe if you haven't already. Um, again, I appreciate you guys for checking this out, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.